Hello, Kendall Garden. Welcome back. This is Mrs. Diaz to teach you about sunlight and weather. We're going to start on Chapter 3 today, Lesson 3.1, Part 1, Getting Warm in the Sunlight. All you need for today's lesson is good hearing and good observation, looking at our observations and also learning how to make predictions. That's something we've been doing for the past lessons and we've done really really good at it so i'm ready and excited to continue to teach you more about sunlight and weather so let's begin so here we're going to return back to the problem that we originally started with remember the pro the problem that we had in the playground okay so let's go back and take a look at that once again all right let me put myself where you can see me better. So here, we've learned that as weather scientists, we're trying to figure out a problem. What have we figured out about why the playgrounds get warm? So we have had a lot of theories. We've been talking about different reasons why the playgrounds get warm. And we've been talking about surface, and we've been talking about how when the sun is touching the surface or radiating toward the surface, it becomes warm and hotter as the day goes by. So let's continue learning more. So we're trying to figure out why the two school playgrounds are too cool or too hot at different times. Let's look at the playground temperatures again. So here in looking at our pictures, we see that in the nighttime, we already know that it is cold, it gets uh, cool in the evening. In the morning, it starts hot um, in the cover playground. In the afternoon, it becomes more comfortable. And you see that she's wearing like a little jacket. Then on the woodland play playground, it starts a little bit uh, more comfortable, but towards the afternoon, it's actually very, very hot. And if you see the child is wearing some shorts. So that tells me when I look at the picture and I observe is that it is very, very hot. I used to live in Florida and in Florida it gets really hot. And most of the kids at this time of the year are wearing shorts. So now our question is, why, why are the playgrounds warmer in the afternoon? So we continue to have this question. So our investigation question is, why is Earth's surface warmer in the afternoon? Hmm. Let's think about that for a minute. I've told you many times that the longer the sun stays shining towards the surface, the warmer it's going to get. So in thinking about the question, let's think about that for a minute. What would the answer be for that? That's correct. Yes, you got it. We have noticed a new effect and now we can figure out the cause. The effect is that the playground surfaces are warmer in the afternoon than in the morning. Next, we will share our ideas about the cause. So here we have an activity, it's called Reading, Getting Warm in the Sunlight. So I am going to be reading a story to you. I'm gonna show you a book, a nonfiction book and it's going to give us information about uh, getting warm in the sunlight. So in preparing for that and getting ready for our book, we want to figure out why Earth's surface is, is warmer in the afternoon than it is in the morning. Sometimes when scientists are looking for ideas that might help them answer a question, they read books about the kinds of things that, are inter that they're interested in. So we're going to read a book that's going to give us information. While I am reading the book, I want you to always try to make predictions. What's going to happen next based on what I'm reading, what the teacher is reading, based on the pictures that we see, because the pictures give us a lot of information. So I'm ready to begin. So here is my book. I don't have the physical book with me, but the book is on the slides, and I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. So we're going to read this book about a day in the life of a lizard. So let's take a look at the front cover. Here we see a lizard, and I see that he's on a rock, but I also see other surfaces. And I can kind of predict that 
it's probably early in the morning and the lizard is walking around maybe to find some warmth but he doesn't want to get too hot either so in looking at the pictures we're going to see the different types of surf surfaces that there are and i want you to be looking at and make predictions as to whether they're hotter they're cooler so we're going to be practicing practice making our predictions and our observations so i'm ready to begin so again, the book is called Getting Warm in the Sunlight. The sun is just coming up. Morning in the desert is very cold. Morning in the desert is very cold. So you see, that's the desert. And I've shown you the desert before. And I have told you that the desert gets very cold when there's no sunlight. The sun is coming up. It was nighttime in the desert. So let's make a prediction. If it was nighttime in the desert, we know that it's very cold. That is correct. So how hot or cold do you think the surfaces in the desert are right now? Remember they said it just started the morning, okay? So we're thinking that the surface is gonna be very cold. Let's continue to read and see what's happening in our story. So it's too cold for the lizard to come out. The lizard needs to be warm before it can run and hunt. The lizard stays in its warm, cozy hole. The sun comes all the way up. The sunlight shines on the rocks and the sand. The rock and sand start to heat up. Even so, they're still too cool for the lizard to come out. So slowly, slowly, as the sun shines, the surface starts getting warmer, but it takes a while. It doesn't just happen right away. Now it's late in the morning. The sun has been up for a few hours. All that time, the sunlight has been shining on the rocks and the sand. The rocks and sand are getting warmer. The lizard can come out now. It walks across the pale sand. The sand is warm. The lizard finds a dark rock. The rock is hot. The dark rock is warmer than the pale sand, even though both surfaces have been heated by the same sunlight. Okay, so let's take a good look at the picture. So now it's saying that the lizard can come out now. So it went through the pale sand, because now the sand is warm. Then the lizard finds a dark rock. The rock is hot. The dark rock is warmer than the pale sand. So it is warmer on the rock than on the sand. But if you really think about it, the rock is higher, so it's closer to the sun. And that's what's making the rock hard, hotter. Okay. Let's continue and read more and see what we're gonna learn from this. The lizard sits on a rock and gets warm in the sunlight. Soon, the lizard is warm enough to run and hunt. So the lizard is happy now. The lizard hunts for bees that are also out in the warm part of the day. They come out and fly around the sunlight. The lizard catches lots of bees. So now the lizard is able to eat some bees. That's why he's happy because I'm guessing he's hungry. He's been waiting for that sun to warm up the surface for him to go out and hunt for his bees. The day goes on. Now it is the afternoon and the sun has been up for many hours. Hmm, let's think about that. So the sun has been up for many hours. How do you think the surface is feeling right now? Is it cool? Is it warm? Is it hot? Is it too hot? The surfaces are even warmer than before. The dark rocks are getting too hot for the lizard. It runs to the pole sand, which is cooler than the dark rocks. Soon, the pale sand also gets too hot. The lizard finds some shade to escape from the sunlight. Hmm, so shade, the word shade. What does the word shade mean? Have you heard of that word before? I know you have. 
It had we have mentioned it. So shade is where we get to when something is too hot. Remember in one of the lessons before there was a doggy who had a choice of sitting on, under the sun or under the shade. And he chose the shade because he was trying to not be too uh, hot, right? All right. Later, the sun starts to set. The sun goes behind the mountains. The sunlight is not heating the rocks and the sand anymore. The rocks and the sand start to get cooler. The lizard runs back to its hole. It needs to get inside before the rocks and the sand are too cold. So now he gets he needs to get back before it gets too cold for him. Hmm, here we see a new a new animal. It is evening and the sunlight has been gone for a while. Now it is cold out. A fox comes out of his hole. The fox does not need the sunlight to keep warm. It can keep itself warm. Because as you know, fox has fur and they can keep themselves uh, warm. So a fox doesn't mind being out in the cold, but a lizard does, right? That's the difference. I hope you liked that story because I did. It gave us a lot of information. And eventually we're going to continue learning more about that book. Uh, but for right now, for this lesson, that's all we need. So, what pattern or surfaces getting warmer and warmer did you notice in the book? What do you think caused this pattern? So, before we do our, our cooler movement routine, because we're going to practice that and I've taught you that before and it's a lot of fun and we're going to go ahead and do that in a minute. I want you to think about what caused the earth, the surface, to get warm and how long it took for it to get warm and then what happened for the surface for it to get cooler. Think about that. What have you learned so far? We learned that the longer the sun stays, the warmer the surface and the longer the sun stays away, the cooler the surface, right? All right, so let's go ahead and do our movements. I'm going to help you. And you can see here in the picture number one, let me move myself so you can see me. There you go. All right, so we already know that cold is standing straight with your arms to your side, like the little girl in the picture. Number two, for cool, you're going to wiggle your fingers slowly, slowly. For number three, for warm, you're going to wiggle them fast, fast, there you go. And for hot, you're going to wiggle them fast, but up, 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 there you go. What a good lesson this was. You were such good observers, and you were such good listeners. I really appreciate the time with you today. So we learned lots of things, and I cannot wait to teach you more lessons coming up. Have a great day. Like always, I love spending time with you. See you soon. Bye-bye.